to press backspace to delete the entry and enter the correct number. Press F7 to save the ID number. F6 tests the communications link with the EOT. When the rear end device's test button is pressed, ARM now appears. You should immediately press ARM F7 to arm the device. Pressing the rear end device's test button also starts the test sequence. The software revision, battery status, and brake pipe pressure will be displayed. When the system is armed, the operator can vent the brake pipe from the rear of the train by moving the EOT emergency toggle switch on the console to the open position. Entering and saving all zeros as the EOT number or pressing F7 disarms the EOT. F8 exit returns you to the top operating display screen. Each display's distance counter is set up from the main menu by pressing the 4 key. The display changes, and F4 allows you to set a specific length. Use the bottom row of keys to enter the desired number. If you make a mistake, use F4 backspace to erase the last digit. F6 toggles between count up and count down. F7 save preset saves the new length and returns you to the top distance counter setup screen. To leave this area without saving any changes, press cancel F8 to return to the top distance counter screen. When you have entered and saved the proper distance, F4 on the main operating display begins counting in feet the distance traveled. When the distance counter preset is set at zero and count up is selected, the distance counter counts up from zero. Press F8, Exit, to return to the main operating screen, from which pressing F4, Distance Start, starts the countdown, or count up of the distance counter. To access speed control and power reduction features, you must press 5 from the main menu of the operating display. Two additional menu choices appear. They are slow speed and power reduction. Slow speed allows you to set the slow speed control. Power reduction provides access to the manual power reduction mode. We'll begin with a look at how to set the slow speed control. The 5 key changes the display to the slow speed control screen, from which you can toggle the slow speed and plug mode off and on. Raise and lower the target speed by pressing or by pressing and holding the keys. And make the current speed the target speed. Pressing the 4 key, Enter New Target, allows you to set the target speed. Use the bottom row of keys to enter the desired speed. Two keys on the top row may be used when needed. They are the decimal point key and the backspace key. F7, Save Target, saves the new target speed. Pressing F8 returns you to the previous screen without saving any changes. This time we'll select Power Reduction from the Speed Control screen. The manual power reduction options are now available. F1 toggles the reduction on and off. F3 changes between MU and lead only operation. Use the F5 and F6 keys to raise and lower the combined power handle load response referred to on the display as notch power percentage. You may hold these keys or repeatedly press them to adjust the percentage. In this mode, the operator has control of the load. Press F8 to exit.
Like most of the setup areas, the screen controls display is accessed from the main menu by pressing the 7 key. Use the F2 and F3 keys to choose the location where the gauges will be displayed. F6 and F7 change the brightness level of the screen. Let's take a look at some of the menu selections on the top row. These are accessed through the top row of keys. Lead sand, which is always available, provides sand to the lead axle depending on the direction the unit is traveling. Train line sand, which is available below 12 miles per hour, sends a request for sand from all of the locomotives in the consist. The following applies to either sand button. Each press gives you 30 seconds of sanding. You have a maximum of three sequential presses while moving. When you are not moving, each press gives you 10 seconds of sanding. That minimizes sand usage around terminals. In emergency, while moving, you have 60 seconds of sanding. Even with all of your sanding options, it is always better to allow the system to determine when to apply sand. Let's take a look at where another important menu selection takes you. From the main operating display, F5, Switches, accesses the switches screen. The menu choices change and the F1 and F2 keys control the on-screen switches. The dynamic brake cutout switch cuts out dynamic braking on this locomotive. When in lead, train line signals will continue to be sent to other units in the consist. The locked axle cutout switch cuts out the locked axle alarm wheel slip protection is still active. Motor cutouts, F7, changes the display to the motor and speed sensor cutouts. From the top, the display includes the motor number, the motor and speed sensor cutout switches, the motor status lights, and the motor cutout switches. Pressing a key in the top row, for example, F1, SSCO1 cutout will cut out the number one traction motor and its speed sensor. The display changes as the top toggle switch in the motor and speed sensor cutout row moves down and the number one traction motor's status light goes out. Pressing the two key, TMCO2, cuts out the number two traction motor. This time, the toggle for the affected traction motor moves to cut out in the motor cutout row. As before, the traction motor status light goes out. In either case, the traction motor will not be powered. Warning: When the speed sensor is cut out, locked axle alarm protection is no longer available for that motor. Most of the setup areas may be accessed from the main menu on the locomotive operating display. We're going to examine an area that can only be accessed through an MMI display, typically the engineer's left display or the crew member's display. Pressing F8, loco monitor from the main MMI or crew member's display, or F2 from any monitor screen, brings up the locomotive monitor display. Starting at the top left of the screen, there are graphically displayed gauges of water temperature, lube oil temperature, alternator volts, alternator amps, and field amps. Additional information is available in the center of the screen. Of particular interest to the operator is this box located to the right. Here, GE's individual axle control allows you to monitor each axle for speed, and load. On this display, as on all of the monitor screens, the F1 key freezes the display to make it easier to read a value that may be fluctuating. Pressing F1 again resumes the normal screen update function. When finished viewing the monitor screens, simply select Exit F8. The GE AC6000 will always be the leader 
with tomorrow's technology today and the ability to incorporate the technology of the future tomorrow.